Happy Halloween everyone, Genki here, and today we're going to try and beat Pokemon Scarlet with only Grievard. With Halloween in a few days, I need to do a spooky challenge, and why not this cute little mob dog? Grievard is a pure ghost Pokemon, with a 290 base stat total. That is 20 points less than our first form starter. It seems pretty obvious that we're going with a physical set, since there is a 31 point difference between our physical attack and special attack. Our defenses seem pretty decent, but then there's our speed. 34 base speed means we will be outsped a lot, unless we invest a lot in speed of course. By level up, Reaver learns literally only two ghost moves, Lick and Phantom Force. However, that is offset by our great type coverage. Dig, Crunch, and Play Rough will definitely get some use. By TM, our type coverage expands even further. We get all the elemental fangs and more ground moves. Ignore Poltergeist because this account does not have the DLC. Time for the rules. I can only use Grievar in battle. No items in battle, only held items and items outside of combat are allowed. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's begin. We start the challenge at the first Poke Center, so I could trade in a Grievard. I named her Zara. She's bashful nature, so neutral stat gains. Her ability is pick up, so during battle, she can randomly pick up items. Her only moves as of right now are tackle and growl. So I trained her up to level nine before challenging Nimona. Zara now has tail whip, bite, and lick. Nimona leads with Claxley, who outspeeds, so our bite's not gonna flinch. I had Zara switch to Lick, which did the same amount of damage, but immediately got a paralysis. This allowed Zara to outspeed and flinch with bite, which she did, twice in a row, allowing her to finish off Claxley in three bites. Last up is Palmy. Palmy went first and did almost a third of Zara's health with Thundershock, as our Lick also did a third. However, Zara was now paralyzed by static. Oh, how the tables have turned. I had Zara switch to Bite, which did more damage. So as we were left with only 3 HP, we took out Palmy with a second Bite. We can now progress to our first gym, the Bug Gym. We challenged Katie at level 14, but with our new strongest move, Headbutt, Nimble was a 3 KO. Headbutt thinned at only a quarter of Tarantula's health who in turn did a lot of damage with super effective assurance. We need to grind. And today, I decided to change things up. In Mezagoza, I bought a Power Bracer. The Power Bracer increases the amount of attack EVs a Pokemon gains. According to Bulbapedia, this means that each Pokemon that gives attack EVs, in this case Shinx, will give 8 attack EVs. We only did this until level 16 before challenging Katie again. Tarantula now did less damage, and was a 3 KO. Thanks to a flinch, we only got hit once, but we were still only at half health for Teriursa. Teriursa outsped, and the only move it could use was Fury Cutter. That is bad, because Fury Cutter gets stronger with every continued use, and our headbutt only did a quarter. I need something that can do more damage, so I made Zara the TM for Fire Fang. I could have probably done this sooner, but oh well. At level 18, Nimble was now a one shot, and Tarantula was a 2 KO, almost a one shot. However, more importantly, Teddy Ursa was taken to below half health with a single Fire Fang. It then missed a Fear Cutter for the first time in the hour we've been attempting this gym. So Teddy Ursa went down to our next Fire Fang. As we were heading to our next gym, we took on our first Titan, Cloth. For Phase 1, Cloth can only attack with Vice Grip and Rock Smash, so it couldn't hit Zara as we took it out with two digs. For Phase 2, Cloth now had access to Rock Tomb, which did a lot of damage. However, thanks to Shelter using Leer and activating Cloth's Anger Shell, Cloth again went down to two digs. Onto the Grass Gym. Zara went first, but Petalos of our Fire Fang and landed Sleep Powder. 
Thankfully, Mega Dragon was not doing that much damage. And we woke up quickly and finished off Petalo. We missed a Fire Fang against Smala, so we took some damage from Razor Leaf before one shotting Smala. The problem though was Sudowoodo. It survived Fire Fang and Green Health, and raised its speed with Trailblaze. That allowed it to outspeed the next turn and finish off Zara. On our next attempt though, we got a flinch with Fire Fang against Petalo. And we didn't miss against Small Elf, so we were in full health for Sudowoodo, who had got taken to half health of Fire Fang thanks to a crit. We also got the flinch, but no crit on our next Fire Fang, so Sudowoodo survived on a sliver. We were still in green health, so we easily survived two rounds of Trailblaze before finishing off Sudowoodo. Time for our next Titan, Bombardier. On the way, we pick up the team for Play Rough. Bombardier outsped, but it was just a 2k of Play Rough. The issue is that in this battle, we don't get a chance to heal between phases. This means we are facing Phase 2 Bombardier with only 5 HP. We cannot get hit. But then on one attempt, Bombardier went for Rock Throw, so Zara went into Phase 2 with 17 HP to spare. However, that did not matter, as Bombardier decided to attack Nockley, as we took it to Yellow Health with Player Off and Rock Throw. It then went for Torment on Nockley, before being finished off by Player Off. Now, usually I would do the Team Star Dark base at this point, but we're weak to Dark and would get destroyed by the Star Wheel. That means it's off the Levin Sia to our next Nimona battle. Rockruff and Polly are both easy one shots with Dig, but now we're paralyzed by Static. Last is Foxwell, who outsped his with Water Pulse. This caused Zara to be confused and hit herself, so she went down. On our next attempt, we get a player off off, but then it only did that much. I need a better move. Thankfully, Rebar can learn Thunder Fang, which I used to replace Fire Fang. I also give Zara the Quick Claw, which activated against Rockruff and Palmy, so we're going into Coxwell with full health and no paralysis. The Quick Claw did not activate the first turn, but Thunderfang was doing a lot more damage to play off. We then got a Quick Claw activation on the second turn, as our Thunderfang took Quaxwell the to red health, and got the Paralysis. Quaxwell's second Water Pulse took Zara the red health, but the Paralysis allowed Zara to outspeed and take out Quaxwell first. Time for the Electric Gym. We got a Quick Claw activation against Watchful, who survived play off at below half health. Watcho naturally outspeeds, so we got hit twice before Watcho went down. Luxio is next, so our attack is down from Intimidate. Luxio's bite was doing huge damage, which is bad, because Luxio survived Dig thanks to the attack draw. Zara went down the next turn. I decided to go back west and challenge all the trainers in West Province Area 1, because if you do that, the Pokemon League rep gives the player the clear amulet. The clear amulet negates stat drops, like the one from Intimidate. I also had Zara take out every rock Pokemon we could find to raise her physical defense, and that somehow led us to facing our third Titan, Earthworm. Don't ask me what I was thinking. With Zara being a ghost, Earthworm can only hit her with Iron Tail, which did a lot of damage. On our first turn, we went for Crunch because of a misclick. However, Earthworm then missed its second Iron Tail, as well as its third one and its fourth one. This amazing luck allowed us to take out Earthworm with Farfang. On to phase 2. Farfang is of course doing less damage, but Arvid's Toad School went for Supersonic. This caused Earthworm to hit itself, as Toad School and Zara took Earthworm to below half health. We also got the burn, so Earthworm's Iron Tail will now do half damage. It still took Toad School to below half health, but Hex and then Fire Fang took Earthworm to its liver. Earthworm went down to its burn. While facing Earthworm, I had decided to look up the location of a certain TM that is very much needed. Lo and behold, it's in the cave where this whole story started. The TM for Force. Finally, back to the Electric Gym. Our new move was not a game changer because we did not get this run against Iono until level 38. Zara still did not outspeed Watchful, but we terrestrialized the one shot with Fan Force. 
Luxus Intimidate was negated by our clear melee. Also, we now outsped Luxio, so we didn't take any damage from fight as Luxio went down to a one shot. Belly Bolt was a one shot, and last is Ms. Magius. Ms. Magius outsped and went for Confuse Ray. This caused Zara to hit herself, so we took big damage from Pex before vanishing to use Phantom Force. Thankfully, Zara powered through Confusion because Phantom Force one shot Ms. Magius. Since Zara was not at such a high level for three badges, we should probably take on the Team Star quest line now. Starting with the Dark Base, Giacomo's Lead Ponard was a one shot. His Star Bill's Intimidate was negated by a clear amulet, so no stat drops. The Star Bill's Wicked Torque still did a third of Zara's health, but thankfully we did not get any misses and took out the Star Bill with two player ups. Next up is the Water Gym, but our current level was not enough. We had to get Zara at the level 40 to face Kofu. His lead Veluza outsped and used Pluck, but was a one shot with Phantom Force. We also took damage from Warktree's Water Pulse before one shotting it too. Last up is Corban Roll. Zara outsped Corban Roll, but Phantom Force only took Corban Roll to below half health. This allowed Corban Roll's Crab Hammer to take Zara straight to 10 HP. We were living on a prayer. But our next Phantom Force got the KO. On to our next team star base, the Firebase. Zara outsped Torkoal, who survived our terror boosted Phantom Force, so we got hit with Flame Wheel before finishing it off. Thankfully, I went and picked up the leftovers. Mela's Star Bill outsped Zara, and took her to half of a Blazing Torque, but that's with the Sun boosting it. After Phantom Force, which was looking at Cthulhu KO, the sun ended. This caused the Star Bill's next Blazing Torque to do considerably less damage, which caused the Star Bill to go for Screech on his next turn, before we finished off with a third fan of Force. On to the normal gym. And despite being a ghost type, this was pretty difficult. Kamala has Sucker Punch and a high attack stat, so to face it, I needed to teach Star a charm. This was not the lower Kamala's attack stat. It was to stall out all of Sucker Punch's 5 power points. With no moves that could damage Zara, Kamala was a 3k with player off. Next is the Dunsparce, who was looking like a 4k with player off. We could tank the Dunsparce's draw runs pretty well, but then it paralyzed us with Glare. We still managed to beat the Dunsparce, but last is the Raptor, who obviously outspeeds and finished off Zara. To prepare for the gym, I went and bought the Power Anklet. This is like the Power Bracer, but for speed instead of attack. We took out a bunch of Rokidis and Palmies until Zara's EVs were finally maxed out. We then just leveled up using EXT candies. However, at level 48, we were still not getting the damage output we needed to take out Staraptor. Let's go try something else. How about the Team Star Poison base? It still took a few tries, but we managed to get this run. Skunking's first move is a coin flip between Sucker Punch and Toxin, but this time it went for Sucker Punch, which took Zara to almost half health. Thankfully we had leftovers, and Skunktank was a one shot with Dig. Rev Room is next, and its assurance did a lot of damage, but it was also a one shot. Melk gave us some relief being slower than Zara, but then survived Dig. It then went for Sludge Wave, which did very little since Ghost resists Poison. Luck went down to one more dig, so last is Atticus' Star Bill. Since the Star Bill's Noxious Torque is resisted, the Star Bill decided to use Spin Out, which was not doing that much damage, while our dig did a quarter. The speed drop for Spin Out made the Star Bill use Flame Charge, which did less damage to Spin Out. The speed boost, though, let the Star Bill outspeed again. But then Zara's next dig left the Star Bill on the third. Her fourth dig left the Star Bill on the sliver. Okay, so here's the thing. Spin Out reduces the Star Bill's speed by 2, while Flame Charge only makes it go up by 1. So the Star Bill this time used Flame Charge twice. It then used the final Spin Out, leaving Zara on 10 HP before going down to one more dig. Now, I don't know what Pass Me was thinking, but instead of reattempting the normal gym, 
we're not facing Great Tusk. Just like Earthworm, Great Tusk in Phase 1 only has one move that can't ghost, Knock Off, which is super effective and does more damage if the target is holding an item. For some reason, holding an item caused Great Tusk to only use Knock Off, so I took off Leftovers, and that caused Great Tusk to pick its moves randomly, so we were able to get off a Phantom Force, which did a quarter. Great Tusk then tried to use Rapid Spin, which gave us a free turn to lower Great Tusk attack stat with Charm. Great Tusk continued to not use Knockoff on turns we vanished with Phantom Force, so we took it out without receiving any damage. On to Phase 2. Great Tusk now had Stomping Tantrum along with Knockoff. First turn, Great Tusk went for Arvin's Skivillain and took it straight to a quarter health, but Skivillain was still able to get off of Scary Face as we went for Charm. We then went for a second charm, which helps the villain survive Great Tusk's rapid spin. I had Zara use the third charm, but this time Great Tusk attacked Zara. Stomping Catchroom only did 21 HP and damage. With Great Tusk at minus 6 attack, I had Zara start going for Phantom Force. However, this turn, Great Tusk finally finished off Skavillan. We now have to face off against Phase 2 Great Tusk by ourselves. But, as long as Great Tusk does not get a crit, I think we'll be fine. Thankfully, we were the ones who actually got the crit, which allows us to finish off Great Tusk with 4 fan forces. Now it's time to face the normal gym. We still have a charm to get rid of Kamala's Sucker Punch power points. Once they were all gone, Kamala was a 2k with Headbutt. Against the Dunsparce, we got 2 lucky flinches with Headbutt. Our third headbutt did not get to flinch, but the Dunsparce just went for Glare, which was neutralized by our Cherry Berry. The Dunsparce went down the next turn. Last is Raptor, so our attack is down from Intimidate. At level 51, Zara was still slower than Raptor, so I had her switch to Charm. This didn't help much, because we were already at half health. However, as Raptor took Zara to red health, Zara got a crit taking Staraptor to red health. Both Pokemon were one hits away from fainting. However, as Staraptor went for Air Lace, Zara survived on 2 HP, allowing her to finish off Staraptor with one more headbutt. While that battle was pretty hectic, we now have to immediately face Nimona. Lycanroc went first, and did big damage with Bite, but was a one-shot with Dig. Zara outsped Goom, and one-shot with Phantom Force. Palma though outsped and hit Zara with Spark before it was one shot and last up is Quackerwall, who outsped and finished off Zara. Well, that was expected but disappointing. Anywho, time for the Ghost Gym. This gym was a lot about RNG. We had the damage, but it still took us almost an hour to get this attempt. We trash sliced first turn, but making a Bennett but went for Shadow Sneak, so Magikarp went down. And Zara took some damage, but we managed to use Fan Force. Bennett was a one shot. I knew Rhyme's next Pokemon Houndstone was going to use Fan Force, so I had Zara use Charm and Mimikyu. This way, we would be invisible when Houndstone attacked, and our Fan Force would hit Houndstone, which one shot it. Last on Rhyme's team is Toxicity. Thanks to our Omni Boost from Terrestrializing, Zara outsped Toxicity. This allowed Zara to dodge Toxicity's Hex and one-shot it. All that was left was Mimikyu. We went for Crunch to break Mimikyu's disguise. Oh, and by the way, Mimikyu had been spamming Shadow Sneak this whole battle. But thanks to Charm and Leftovers, it was not doing much as we finished it off. With 6 badges, we have another Nomona battle. Lycanroc of course went first, and its Crunch did a lot of damage. It was a one shot of Phantom Force, as was Sliggy. The issue though was Palmon, who outsped and paralyzed Zara with Thunder Wave. This caused us not to be able to use Phantom Force and take the damage from Spark. At that point, I just reset. We were not being Pokeball with only 50 HP. At level 68, Lycanroc still outsped and went for Crunch, and got the defense drop. However, it was a one shot with Dig. Sleepy was a one-shot player off. Palmot still outsped, 
but it went for spark this time instead of thunder wave. So we were easily able to one shot it. Last is Quackable, and the reason we were at level 68. At level 68, Zara outspeeds Quackable. This allowed us to dodge Aqua Step and one shot Quackable. On to the Psychic Gym. Ferrograph is part normal, so I retaught Zara Crunch, which took Ferrograph to red health. Ferrograph then used its own Crunch, but Zara was still in green health, so we took it out the next turn. Spothar outspit and used Shadow Ball, which did big damage, but it was thankfully a one shot. Zara outspit Garden Warp, so it was a one shot. It lasted Forges, who Zara also outspit in one shot. Finally, a first try victory. Time for the final gym, the Ice Gym. For this battle, I had Zara relearn Fire Fang, so we could have a guaranteed one shot on Frostmaw. This way, it could not set up Tailwind. We then terrestrialized and went for Phantom Force on Beredic, who was a one shot. Sahin so ended up surviving Phantom Force to Red Health, so we took some damage from Ice Spinner before finishing it off. Last is Altaria, who also survived Phantom Force to Red Health, however, we tanked Hurricane pretty well, so Altaria went down to our next Phantom Force. Time for our last Titan, Dondozo. As a ghost, Dondozo will not go for Bias Slam. However, Aquatel still did a lot. Thankfully, we managed to take out Dondozo in only 3 Phantom Forces. On to Phase 2. Phantom Force was still doing a lot of damage. Also, Zara is not levitating in a very ghostly fashion. Greedon then went for Tail Whip, and that caused our next Phantom Force to take Dondozo to like a fifth of its health. The takedown from Greedon and Phantom Force finished off Dondozo, so it's time for Tatsugiri. Phantom Force hit Tatsugiri for more damage than Dondozo, but then Greedon again went for Tail Whip. This caused Greedon's next takedown to do a lot of damage, but more importantly, it allowed Phantom Force to finish off Tatsugiri. Let's go finish off the Team Star bases, starting with the Fairy base. Dealing with Ortega's lead Azumarill was fine. Zara outsped, her clear amulet negated Azumarill's charm, and Phantom Force 2 shot it. The issue was Ortega's dash button. Dash button outsped, had super effective crunch, and it survived Phantom Force. We took out Dash Bell with more Phantom Force, but then Wigglytuff came in. Wigglytuff is part normal, and Dig still left in great health. I leveled up Zara to level 75. Azumarill still tried to use Charm, so we were in full health for Dash Bun. Dash Bun decided to use Baby Doll Eyes, which was also negated by our clear amulet, so we were able to get off a Phantom Force without receiving any damage. Dashman still survived the hit, but as we went for our next attack, Dashman used Baby Doll Eyes again, allowing Zara to finish it off a headbutt. I had Zara use headbutt on Lily Tough, which got a flinch first turn, but it didn't on the second hit. Thankfully, Wiggly Tough only tried to use Charm, so it went down. Last is Ortega Star Bill. We can now go back to Fan Force. The Star Bill outsped and went for Steel Roller. Which did some damage. It then went for Confusion Ray as we started spamming Phantom Force. The Confusion actually ended quickly, so the Star Belt used the second Confusion Ray. We then hit ourselves once, which caused Zara to take some damage from Magical Torque. However, one more Phantom Force finished off the Star Belt. Last is the Fighting Base. Multiple of Ares Pokemon have super effective moves. Toxicroak has Sacker Punch. Lucario has Dark Pulse, and Annihilate has Rage Fist. We can use Charm Spam to get rid of Toxtrox's Sucker Punches, before one-shotting with Fan Force. However, Lucario outsped, and took Zara straight to a sliver before it got one-shot. I don't think I need to mention Annihilate. At level 83, I decided to give Zara the Quick Claw, which actually activated on both Lucario and Annihilate. This means we finally reached Pesimia, who did some damage with Seed Bomb, but was a 2 KO. Last is Aerie Star Bill. The Star Bill outsped and used Spin Out, as we hit it with Phantom Force. Phantom Force activated Stamina, 
which increases the Star Bell's defense. Also, unlike Atticus, Airy Star Bell has Shift Gear, which increases its attack and fully repairs its speed. The constant defense buff from Stamina and the attack boost from Shift Gear cause this to go down. At level 87, Zara now naturally outsped Lucario and Annihilate. Passimi was still 2 KO, but now that we outsped Lucario and Annihilate, I had Zara holding leftovers. Airy Star Bell this time had decided to leave with Shift Gear as we went for Fan Force. Fan Force took the Star Bell to almost half health, but now the Star Bell was at plus one defense. The Star Bell then went for a second and third Shift Gear as Zara's second Fan Force took the Star Bell to a quarter. The Star Bell then finally attacked the spin out, but despite being plus three, Zara survived the hit in green health. Our third Fan Force only left the Star Bell in red health, but they had decided to use a fourth Shift Gear, so it went down. Time for the Elite Four. Rika's lead Witch Cash was a one shot. Ductria then go for Sucker Punch, so he one shot it without receiving any damage. Cameron was a one shot, but then Donphan survived in yellow health. Zara tanked its Earthquake, so it went down and lost its Clotsire. Clotsire also survived in yellow health, but Zara still had plenty of health to tank Clotsire's Terra Boosted Earthquake, so it went down, giving us a first try victory. You know who is the farthest from a first try victory? Poppy. I decided to go for Dig against Kaburaj, but then it survived in red health, causing Zara to get hit by a heavy slam. Thankfully, we had leftovers. Zara outspec Kaburaja, so it went down the next turn, but next is Corvo Knight. A terror boosted Phantom Force left Corvo Knight in low L health, but thankfully, Zara tanked its Great Bird. Corvo Knight went down the next turn, and next is Bronzong, who was a one shot. Magnozone survived Dig thanks to Sturdy, but it only used a weak flash cannon. So it went down and lost its Tink Tongue, who outspeeds. At level 93, Zara now one shots Kaburaga. Corviknight went for Iron Defense, but Zara got crit one shot. Magnozone decided to use Flash Cannon in its first turn, so after being hit by Zara, it then sets up Light Screen. This means we're going in Tinkaton at full health. Tinkaton still out sped, but Zara survived Gigaton Hammer with 98 HP. However, Tinkaton then survived Fan Force on a literal sliver. This allowed Tinkaton to get off another Gigaton Hammer, which Zara survived on 6 HP, allowing her to finish off Tinkaton. Next is Larry. Tropius was a one shot of Fan Force, but next is Staraptor. I had Zara hold the clear amulet to negate the Intimidate, but the issue was that Staraptor is immune to Fan Force and Dig. It ended up surviving Clear Rough. So Zara got hit with Brave Bird twice before Staraptor went down to recoil damage. Altaria and Oricara were both flanking one shots, but last is Flamigo, who outspeeds. I am seeing a trend here. I decided to have Zara relearn Thunderfang. Staraptor still outsped, so we got hit with one Brave Bird, but it was not a one shot. During Flamigo, I actually discovered that Zara and Flamigo are speed tied. However, Flamico survived Fan Force on a sliver. I thought this might be a range, but we just kept losing the speed tie, so I decided to get Zara up to level 98, and to no one's surprise, Zara now outsped and one shot Flamigo. Last on the Elite 4 is Hassel. Norva was a one shot of Clay Rough, but then I remembered Terra Boosted Fan Force is still stronger, so I used that the one shot Haxorus, Dragology, and Fafel. Baxcalibur survived Fan Force, however, Zara survived Glaive Rush, so we were able to beat Hassel on the first try. At level 98, I was hoping it was going to be a first try. Finally, it's time for Gita. His spother outsped and hit Zara with a Lumina Crash, but it was a one shot of Fan Force. Next is King Emmet, who survived Player of Green Health, and took Zara straight to Red Health with a single Kata Cleave. On the next attempt, I gave Zara a dig, but it only took King Gambit to below half health, so no matter what, King Gambit was always going to be at least 2k. I decided to do some hyper training. 
This will max out Zara's IVs. HP, Special Attack, and Special Defense were already maxed out thanks to Zara being bred using a Ditto. We had a lot of money, so I bought 3 bottle caps to max out Zara's attack, defense, and speed. To my surprise, Zara gained 26 more points in attack. That's a lot. However, it was only enough to take King Gambit from just below half to a third. Thankfully, our defense buff allowed Zara to survive Countdown Cleave on a third. This combined with leftovers meant we were still safe after taking out King Gambit. Avalug is next, and it survived Fan Force, but it only hit us with a weak crunch, so we were able to take it out with one more hit. We went for Fan Force against Gogo, who decided to use Bulk Up, which raised its defense. This allowed Gogo to survive, but then Zara survived poorly to run help, so Gogo went down the next turn. Veluza was an easy one shot, and last is Glamora. I decided to have Zara go for Dig, which Glamora survived in red health. This allowed Gita to go for Terra Blast, which Zara survived with 31 HP, allowing her to get off another Dig and take out Glamora. On to our final Nomona battle. For this battle, I had to get Zara up to level 100, and I'll explain why in a moment. Lycanroc outsped, but thankfully did not get a crew with Stone Edge as he one shot with Dig. Palma also outsped. It took Zara to below half health with Double Shock, but it was a one shot with Phantom Force. By the way, Zara was still holding leftovers. Against the Dunsparce, we took it to just above half health with Play Rough, as it missed its Dragon Rush. We then took the Dunsparce to a sliver and got the attack draw. This caused its next Dragon Rush to do very low damage, so the Dunsparce went down the next turn. We went from Phantom Force against Earthworm, who survived the hit. This allowed it to go for Iron Tail, which took Zara back to below half health. However, it went down the next turn. Gudra was a one shot, and last is Crocodile. The reason we had to be level 100 is because level 100 was the minimum level we needed to one shot Quackaball. At level 99, Quackaball survived Phantom Force with a fair bit of health. That's one story done, on to direct to Clavel. Oranguru is part normal, so we had to relearn Crunch in order to one shot it. Pontigas was the one shot of Phantom Force, but next is Gyarados, so our attack is down from Intimidate. Gyarados was still a one shot, but next is Amoongus. Did you know that Pokemon can still be poisoned while being invisible during Phantom Force? Well, thanks to the attack drop, Amoongus survived Phantom Force and did big damage with Hex. I decided to use Phantom Force again, which was bad because poison gets worse every turn. With Zara and Red Health against the Mama Snow, I reset the game. This time, I put on the clear amulet, so no attack drop from Gyarados. We still went for Phantom Force against Amoongus, who this time went for Spore. It was not a one shot. Abomasto was a one shot of Fire Fang, and that's the Skeleton Urge. Skeleton Urge survived Zara's Phantom Force with red health. That allowed it to use Shadow Ball, which took Zara's shirt to almost half health. Thankfully, Zara outsped, so Skeleton Urge went down to one more Phantom Force. Next up is Penny, but Penny is Penny. Zara outsped Umbreon. We survived Player Off, but did little damage to Dark Pulse, so it went down to Fire Fang. Flyer was a one shot with Dig. Big Corian was a one shot with Phantom Force. Jolteon tried to use Baby Doll Eyes, but was a one shot with Dig. Leafeon was a 2 KO with Fire Fang, but it only tried to use Baby Doll Eyes, so we took it out and lasted Sylveon, who only tried to use Baby Doll Eyes, so it was a one shot with Phantom Force. Two stories done, last is Arvin. Arvin leads a Greedent, so we had to take it out with Clay Rock. Thankfully, it only went for a weak Earthquake, so it went down to one with Clay Rock. Scavilla and Torchgrove were both one shot with Fan Force, but against Gargantical, we went for Dig. This was risky, because Gargantical has Earthquake. However, it went for Stone Edge. But then Dig only took Gargantical to a quarter. Gargantical's ability makes it resist Ghost moves which is why I didn't use Phantom Force. 
past me for some reason, decided to have Zara use Dig again. But thankfully, Gargantic went for Stone Edge, allowing Zara to get the KO. Against Cloister, we went for a Thunder Fang, which Cloister survived, but it decided to be Magnezone 2.0 instead of Light Screen. So it went down the next turn, and last is lost it. I had given Zara the clear amulet so no stat drops. I chose the clear amulet over leftovers because this made clear for one shot, but they would just got a crit, making that pointless. We cannot enter area zero, or we have to face Ayasada. Slithering was an easy one shot player up, but next is Fluttermane. Fluttermane outspeeds, and its shadow ball hits hard, taking Zara to very nice HP. It was a one shot fan of force. But then Brutebonnet came out. Brutebonnet has Sucker Punch, which at Zara's current health finished her off. I had Zara holding a Quick Claw, and when we eventually got it to activate against Fluttermane, we discovered that Brutebonnet's payback hits like a truck. Also, it survives play rough. The best strategy to face against Ayasada I can think of was to change Zara's Terra type to normal. This means that we can bait a useless Shadow Ball from Fluttermane before taking it out with Phantom Force. The normal Terra type now brought out Screamtail, who used a weak Drain Punch but was a one-shot with Phantom Force. Oh, and I now had Zara holding leftovers again. Rupont now had nothing super effective to Zara, but it was still a 2KO. Sandy Shocks outsped Zara, and Sarah of Dig on a sliver. So we got hit with Earth Power twice before taking it out. Last is Roaring Moon, who outspeeds and takes out Zara with Dragon Claw. To beat Sada now, it was all about RNG. A lot of the RNG depended on the later members of Sada's team. On this attempt, I decided to give Zara Tail Whip to lower Brubon's defense and prevent Zara's punch, but then Brubon went for Payback. It took Zara to almost half health. But Brubonnet was not a one shot with Playroof. I get Sand Shocks, we got a crit, so we only got hit once with Earth Power. This put us at 113 HP for Roaring Moon, and it was just enough. Zara survived Dragon Claw with only 5 HP to spare, and she didn't miss her Playroof, which one shot Roaring Moon. We beat Pokemon Scarlet with only Grievard. Man, that was rough. Thank you to anyone who watched this video, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe.